Something that I've been thinking about for a while now is why every time Miles Boykin's name is brought up amongst Ravens fans, uh, they seem to have this huge problem and issue uh, with their 2019 third round draft pick. Uh, Miles Boykin, he's been called so many different things like soft or he doesn't play to his size or he's nothing but a blocker. And some people just flat out say that he's not a good wide receiver. Now, I'm not here to tell you that he's headed to the Hall of Fame or anything like that, but I just don't think he's been given a fair shot. And I feel like so much of Ravens fans anger towards Miles Boykin is actually displaced. And I'm going to tell you why. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and again with Miles Boykin uh, I feel like he has been misjudged uh, about his career with the Baltimore Ravens uh, because when you look at it uh, you we can look at the numbers it, it can look sort of underwhelming um, he is caught in 2019 13 catches for 198 yards three touchdowns 2020, he had 19 catches for 266 yards, four touchdowns, uh, but then last season, he only had one catch for six yards, and of course, we know that he was hurt last year. He had the hamstring injury, then he had the finger injury later on, uh, but he was mostly relegated to special teams, but with Miles Boykin, I just feel like uh, all this displaced frustration uh, that a lot of people have been pointing towards Miles Boykin, it should really be pointed to the Ravens. And the reason I say that is because the Ravens have a history, especially even a recent history, when it's come to both the drafting and development or lack thereof at the wide receiver position. I've been saying it so much throughout this offseason, even last offseason, too. If you're not a first round draft pick at wide receiver, if you're not a first round pick, you're not going to make it the, the the odds are already stacked against you before you even step foot on a football field for the Ravens and this is not me oh man I hate the Ravens but no it's nothing like that but that's exactly what it is that's exactly what it's been so many fans they can be so dismissive of so many wide receivers that have come through for the Ravens but I always say like I feel bad for those wide receivers because they never got a fair shake they never did. Let's just go through this list of wide receivers that the Ravens drafted since 2008. And no, this is not to make you feel like, oh, man, Harbaugh just been so bad at drafting wide receivers because this issue with the Ravens and wide receivers has even been before John Harbaugh. But since we're in the John Harbaugh era, let's start right there. And let, let me read you some of these names. And tell me if you remember these wide receivers. I'm sure y'all remember plenty of them, but a lot of them y'all probably forgot. All right, 2008, they drafted Marcus Smith and Justin Harper uh, in the fourth and the seventh round. What did they do for the Ravens? Yeah, nothing. Uh, 2010, they drafted David Reed in the fifth round. Now, he was a good kick returner, but as a wide receiver, like you, you never really saw anything from him. Uh, 2011, Torrey Smith. He was drafted in the second round. Now, with Torrey Smith, ooh, it worked out for him. Initially, it wasn't looking like it was going to because they had traded for Lee Evans uh, from the Buffalo Bills to pair him with Anquan Bolden. And Torrey Smith, he ended up getting his shot a lot earlier than expected because Lee Evans, he got hurt. And Torrey Smith certainly made the most of it. Him and Joe Flacco, they had that connection. And, of course, the rest was history. So, shout out to Torrey Smith for making it out alive and even being one of the few Ravens wide receivers drafted by the Ravens who get a contract with another team after being with the Ravens. That's crazy. Uh, but in that same draft, Tandon Doss, he was drafted in the fourth round. And we know that was uh, one of Flacco's picks. That Flacco was like, give me Tandon Doss. But it didn't work out for one Tandon Doss. 2012, they drafted Tommy Streeter. 6'5", fast wide receiver from UM. Uh, we know how that went. Uh, in 2013, they drafted Aaron Millette. He was like 6'4", 6'5", wide receiver. But, yeah, that was the last you heard of him. Um, then the following year in 2014, they drafted Michael Campanero. Oh, that dude could catch anything. He could catch anything, but he was just injury prone, and it just uh, it was so sad to see. 
And even the, the, the literally the last play of his Ravens career, he was walking off the field and slipped, I think, on a trash bag or something, and he got injured again. And I was like, oh, man, that, that was a tough way to go out. But then 2015, this was very interesting because in 2015, they drafted Brashad Perryman in the first round and Darren Waller in the sixth round, both wide receivers. Now, we know Brashad Perryman, he, his draft stock it went through the roof when he ran his 40 time. Um, and that's going to happen to some more players as the combine is going on right now. Um, but it's funny because with Brashad Perryman and Darren Waller, it just wasn't working out uh, with the Ravens. Now, both of them had their off-field stuff that they were dealing with. I know with Brashad Perryman, uh, his dad had passed, which was unfortunate. With Darren Waller, he, of course, had all his stuff going on with the, the drugs and whatnot. But now he's team keeping clean, so that was great. But... With the Ravens, it just didn't work out. But it, it worked out for both of them once they left the Ravens. Once they left the Ravens, that's when things got so much brighter. Of course, Brashad Perriman, he went to the Browns, spent some time there, and also went to the Bucks. And then Darren Waller, he went to the Raiders, and he became one of the best tight ends in the league. Now, the conversion to tight end, it started with the Ravens. But he went on to the Raiders, and the rest was history. Um... And then in 2016, they drafted Chris Moore, a great special teamer. But as far as wide receiver, it was, it was shaky there. It was shaky. Uh, 2017, they didn't draft any wide receivers. 2018, they drafted two wide receivers, Jaleel Scott and Jordan Lastly. Jordan Lastly, amazing route runner, but the hands weren't there. Uh, then he got released from the team, like I think maybe a year later. Uh, and Jaleel Scott, it... It's just like he disappeared. I think he went to the Jets or something. I don't know what happened after that. Then in 2019, oh, first round pick, Marquise Brown. Certainly has worked out for him thus far. And yeah, while he does need to clean up the, the drops a bit, um, he, is, he has had plenty of opportunities with the Ravens. And they are very invested in him, as you can tell. Uh, so shout out to that. Um, and then that was also the draft where they drafted Miles Boykin. But he was in the third round. So, again, you're not a first-round pick. Them opportunities ain't coming. And as you can tell thus far, everybody who we named who hasn't been a first-round pick, they disappear in the thin air. Uh, and then in 2020, uh, Devin DuVernay and James Prochet, they got drafted in the COVID year. Um, and with Devin DuVernay, he was all pro this year. Not as a wide receiver, but as a returner. But, hey, we'll take it. But with Devin DuVernay, um, he just seems to be a gadget guy. For the Ravens, it does not seem like his career is going to really uh, explode in a good way as a wide receiver with the Ravens. And with James Prochet, we see all this potential. We see potential, potential, potential. But it doesn't seem as if the Ravens are ever going to bank on that potential. Now, of course, I hope that I am completely wrong. But based off of recent history, as we've gone over, it's not looking good for either one of those two in the long run. Uh, and then last year, first round pick Rashad Bateman. Oh, Rashad Bateman, he, he got a lot of opportunity last year. More than the average Ravens wide receiver, especially more than the average Ravens rookie wide receiver. Uh, and you can expect him to get plenty more opportunity. He's a first round pick. He's a first round pick. Uh, and then you have Tylen Wallace, who was drafted in the fourth round. So he was primarily on special teams. And there were a lot of receivers ahead of him. But he was on special teams. He got a little bit of action on offense, but not much. And then, unfortunately, his season ended with a, a, a fake punt, uh, with an injury that he got on a fake punt. So uh, I say all that to say this. Again, if, if you're not drafted early by the Ravens, if you're not a first-round draft pick, then your chances of making it as a wide receiver are slim to none. The odds are stacked against you. So this is why I say this is not necessarily a Miles Boykin issue. It's not. Because I, I know there can be some people, too, that say, oh, man, well, Miles Boykin, oh, it all starts in practice. It starts in practice. That, that's where you got to show your stuff and really get uh, the, your chemistry and your rapport with your quarterback and whatnot. Yeah, it's true. It does start in practice. But what about all those other guys that we named? Not named Rashad Bateman. Not named Hollywood Brown. And not named Torrey Smith. What about all those other guys? Didn't it start in practice there too? Uh, well, you could say that, but none of those guys made it. 
None of them. None of them had a crazy impact for the Ravens. None of them. And only one. I remember Tandon Dawes. He got a little contract in Jacksonville with the Jaguars for a little bit. But most of them just, they didn't make it out alive. Their careers started and ended with the Baltimore Ravens. And that's why people say that's Ravens are where wide receivers' careers go to die. Now, of course, Eric DaCosta, he's changing that. He's trying to change that because he's been going younger at wide receiver year after year after year. He's getting a bit younger and younger. And that's a good thing. We appreciate that. Um, but as far as Miles Boykin, he's like they're, they're in the midst of this change. This change is happening, but he's he's in on the back end. And what I mean when I say that is he's not necessarily part of the change. He, he's already part of the past of, of just it just not working out. And now I'm afraid that it's too late. I feel like it's, it's too late. So hopefully for whatever happens with Miles Boykin, I, I would hope that he would get more opportunity with the Ravens. But I just don't see it happening. I, I don't. I really don't. And I'm fearful for the other guys that are on the Ravens roster because you hear hit amongst fans so much. Oh, man, this guy did that in college. This guy did that in college. Whenever you hear them talk about James Prochet and Devin DuVernay, these dudes don't drop in college. They did not drop. They had the most receptions in college without drops. Broke records. But then you look at their usage on the Ravens. And it's like, oh, what, what records did these dudes break again? What was that? Huh? Miles Boykin. He was the number one receiver at Notre Dame, and Chase Claypool was a number two. He was a number two. But you look at the situations. It's so important to look at situations. Chase Claypool went to a team where the development of wide receivers is extraordinary in Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, we've seen it plenty of times. Well, so many wide receivers have come and gone there, and they, they do an excellent job there. But Miles Boykin, he went to the Ravens, and that's not their thing. Now, we know that every team's not going to be able to develop every single position, and I get that. And this, this is why I love that Eric DaCosta is trying to change that narrative when it comes to Ravens wide receivers. But my point in this video is just to make sure that you realize what it is instead of what it isn't. Because so many people say, oh, Miles Boykin, he's this, he's that, he's that, da 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 so were all those other wide receivers not drafted in the first round by the, by the Ravens? Were they all just so bad? Or does this have something to do with the team itself and the lack of development? Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just like most wide receivers, when it comes to being with the Ravens, if they're not drafted in the first round, then... Right and grave it.